Today, the topic is spiral similarity. This is a transformation defined as the composition of rotation and homotety. By composition, I mean that you do one transformation after the other. So a spiral similarity is when you first do the rotation and then you do the homotety. And importantly, you do both transformations with respect to the same center. This point is called the center of spiral similarity. Let's see an example. We have a quadrilateral. Say I want to construct a spiral similarity that transforms the blue segment into the red segment. A center of spiral similarity for these two segments is here. So I will first rotate the blue segment about the center. And then I will apply homotity and rescale the segment until it fits the red one. To make things more clear, I will draw the lines and circles that define the rotation and the homotity. As you can see, during the rotation, both points move along an arc of a circle centered at the center of spiral similarity. Then the resulting segment gets scaled up with respect to the same center. Actually, for any two segments in the plane, there exist two centers of spiral similarity. I'm going to show you the second center for our two segments. It is located at the top of the screen. Again, we apply rotation and then homotity, this time with respect to the new center. As a matter of fact, the first center of spiral similarity that we looked at is a center of spiral similarity for the two diagonals of the initial quadrilateral. Here, you can see the rotation and homotity more clearly. Furthermore, the second center of spiral similarity that we looked at is a center of spiral similarity for the other two sides of the initial quadrilateral. Here, you can see the rotation and homotity more clearly. Now it is time to answer the questions. Which are these two points and why do they have these bizarre properties? We will now be looking at the first spiral similarity in more detail. First, notice that if the blue segment transforms into the red segment, then the blue triangle transforms into the red triangle. Hence, the two triangles are similar. So when we are searching for the center of spiral similarity, we are essentially looking for a point such that the two triangles that it makes with the two segments are similar. They also need to be oriented properly. An example of reversely oriented triangles are two triangles that are mirror images of one another. We don't want to try to place two mirror images of the same triangle on top of one another. It just wouldn't work, as you can see here. Here is how to construct the desired center of spiral similarity. Take the diagonals of the quadrilateral and construct these two circumcircles. Their second intersection point is the desired center of spiral similarity. See for yourself. Now let's prove that this is the image of this under spiral similarity with this center. We need to prove that this triangle, the blue triangle, is similar to the red triangle and that they're properly oriented. Firstly, notice that from this cyclic quadrilateral, we have that this angle equals this angle. Then because this and this are straight lines, we know that this angle equals this angle. And lastly, because of this cyclic quadrilateral, we know that this angle corresponds to this arc, so it equals this angle. And therefore, these two angles here are equal. Now consider this angle here. Because of this cyclic quadrilateral, it equals this angle here. And so this one is 180 minus this angle. And now because of this cyclic quadrilateral, we know that the sum of this angle and this angle is 180. And therefore, this angle equals this angle equals this angle. And now we got that the red triangle 
and the blue triangle are similar, and they have the right orientation. You can see that after we rotate the blue triangle, it's going to go here, and so this angle is going to move here, and these two lines will become parallel, which is what we needed. A little while ago, we saw that this point is not only the center of spiral similarity for this segment and this segment, but it's also the center for spiral similarity of this segment and this segment, the diagonals of the initial quadrilateral. We're going to prove this in two ways. The first way is to just notice that this angle here equals this angle here because of this cyclic quadrilateral. And furthermore, we know that this angle equals this angle because it's just the sum of this one and this one in the middle on one hand and this one and the same one in the middle on the other hand. Therefore, this triangle is similar to this triangle, which means that the spiral similarity exists. Here's another way in which we can prove the second similarity. We know that the blue triangle is similar to the red triangle, and therefore the ratio of its corresponding sides is equal. And so A divided by B equals A prime divided by B prime, which is written here. But this can also be written as A divided by A prime equals B divided by B prime. And now if we take a look at the other pair of triangles, this triangle and this triangle, which we should prove are similar, A divided by A prime is the ratio of the two sides of the first triangle, and B divided by B prime is the ratio of the two sides of the other triangle. And we also know that the angle between those sides in the two triangles is equal, because this angle obviously equals this angle, when we consider that this equals this. And therefore, these two triangles are also similar. And so we can conclude that this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. Now let's try to use what we've learned to enrich the construction given here. Suppose we're given two triangles that are similar and have a common vertex. What can we say about this construction? Well, notice that this point is the center of spiral similarity that sends the red segment to the green segment, or vice versa. And therefore, we know how to construct this point by using only this segment and this segment. And it's by constructing the two diagonals of the quadrilateral and taking two circumcircles. Hence, we know that if this is the intersection of the diagonals, then this quadrilateral is cyclic, and this quadrilateral is also cyclic. Because of the cyclic quadrilaterals, we know that this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this angle, and these two angles that are equal also equal this angle and this angle. Therefore, the conclusion is that this triangle is similar to this triangle. In fact, the most common approach when noticing a spiral similarity is to just work with the ratios of the sides. From the given similar triangles, we have that A divided by B equals A prime divided by B prime. Therefore, A divided by A prime equals B divided by B prime. And by using this, and by noticing that the two green angles on the picture are equal, we can conclude that this triangle is similar to this triangle. And therefore, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. And hence, since this one equals this one, we know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral, and because this one equals this one, we know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now let's talk a little bit about how to find the second center of spiral similarity that's going to take the red segment and send it into the blue segment. To find the first center of spiral similarity, we just intersected this line with this line. And to find the second center, we intersect the other two lines on the picture, this line and this line. Now we're going to take the circumcircle of this triangle and the circumcircle of the larger triangle and intersect them. The intersection point is going to be the center of spiral similarity. This is the second center of spiral similarity that sends the red segment to the blue segment. To prove it, we just need to show that this triangle is similar to this triangle. Well, firstly, this angle equals this angle because of this cyclic quadrilateral. And secondly, this angle equals this angle because of this cyclic quadrilateral. And therefore, this angle equals this angle. Next, this angle equals this angle because of this cyclic quadrilateral. Both angles point towards this arc. And this angle equals this angle because of this cyclic quadrilateral. And therefore, this angle equals this angle. And so we got that this triangle is similar to this triangle. They have the same angles. Now let's do the trick with the ratios one more time. Because of this triangle similar to this triangle, we know that this divided by this equals this divided by this. And therefore, this divided by this equals this divided by this. And the angle here equals the angle here. And therefore, we have another pair of similar triangles. This triangle is similar to this triangle. Hence, we got that this angle equals this angle, and that this angle equals this angle. And what's more, this point is the center of spiral similarity that sends not only this segment to this segment, but also this segment to this segment. 
because of the similar triangles we just proved this one and this one. This is the optional problem. We have a pentagon such that this angle equals this angle equals this angle and that this angle equals this angle here equals this angle. This segment is drawn and this segment is drawn and they intersect at this point and then this red dashed line connects these points and intersects this segment at this point. We have to prove that this point is the midpoint of this segment. And here's the solution. Notice that the three triangles that we have here, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, are similar. Because this angle equals this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle equals this angle. Therefore, this point can be thought of as the center of spiral similarity that sends this segment to this segment, or this segment to this segment, or this segment to this segment. To solve this problem, we're going to need to consider the spiral similarity that sends this segment to this segment. If we denote these lengths as a, b, a prime, and b prime, then we know that a divided by b equals a prime divided by b prime because of the similar triangles, this triangle and this triangle. And therefore, we know that a divided by a prime equals b divided by b prime. And so we spotted a new pair of similar triangles, this triangle and this triangle. Because you see, the angle they have here is the same. It's just twice the small angle. Therefore, we can conclude that this angle equals this angle, and that this angle equals this angle. From these two equalities, it follows that this quadrilateral is cyclic, and that this quadrilateral is also cyclic. Now remember that this triangle is similar to this triangle, and so the angle here equals the angle here. But these parts of the angle are equal, and therefore the other parts of the angle are also equal. And now from this cyclic quadrilateral, we get that this angle equals this angle. Now similarly, we know that the large angle here equals the large angle here, and this small angle equals the small angle. And therefore the other part of the angle, this part, equals the other part of this angle, this part. What's more, because of this cyclic quadrilateral, we have that this angle equals this angle. Now, because of the alternate segments theorem applied to this circle here, around this quadrilateral, we know that this angle equals this angle, and therefore this line must be tangent to the circle around this quadrilateral. Similarly, because of the alternate segments theorem applied to the circumcircle of this quadrilateral, we have that this angle equals this angle, and therefore this line is tangent to the circumcircle of this triangle, which is the circumcircle of the whole quadrilateral. Now let's consider the power of this point with respect to this circle. Well, it is y squared, and it equals this times this. But this is coincidentally the power of the same point with respect to the other circle, because this times this also corresponds to the power with respect to the other circle. But the power of, to the other circle is also x squared, because this is a tangent line. And therefore, y squared equals this times this equals x squared, and so x equals y.